that's a spicy meatball. This is episode two of the Simpsons Arcade playthrough. So, uh, as you can tell, Maggie's been thrown into the lake and I'm going after Wayland Smithers, the psychopath. I think it's because he hasn't come out of the closet, but still. And um, as you can tell, this is a side scrolling beat him up. Now again, we're doing a uh, competition for a chance for yourselves to win 2,100 Xbox Live points. Imagine what you could do with those points. You could uh, give them to your family members or download downloadable content or even get the Simpsons arcade game with a lot more points to spare. I think I'm on the seventh continue now. But yes. Oh dear, bees. Yeah, man. Very hard. And I'm beating up a monkey. And now you guys are trying to stop yourselves from using the rude definition of me spanking the monkey. Um, to, well, I would say uh, Sunday, because this is probably uploaded on Monday now. Um, we have a nice little uh, article on www.nerdgenius.com that's G-E-N-I-O-U-S which is written by a friend of mine and an amazing character actor Mikey O'Neill um, otherwise known as Michael Pillinger he's um, went to go and see the Mick Foley uh, comedy tour and um, which was uh, up in London um, I didn't get to go and see it because it was too late to get tickets so uh, he's written a nice little review of it and um, it's, it's one of those things that you have to sort of see to believe. Mick Foley is one of the most diverse individuals in the wrestling industry. Most of you have probably known him as a uh, Cactus Jack. Others would have known him as Mankind. Or if you're a TNA follower, you would have known him as Mick Foley, the former TNA world champion, former TNA TV champion. And of course in the WWE as Mankind former WWE Hardcore Tag Team Champion because he never won an IC title or the United States Championship which was a shame now Mick came from that sort of era of um, wrestling which most fans go on about constantly called the Attitude Era um, and uh, he and I don't know what else to say about him. <laughs> He's an active activist for the charity known as Rain. Um, it's a women's charity which talks about, um, for one, it highlights uh, sexual abuse, which he's probably one of the first guys to actually uh, highlight that as part of the charity and. Uh, he did release a book a while back called Countdown to Lockdown. Apparently it was a really good book. I haven't read it myself, so I'm going to pick up a copy at some point. And he's also, oh yeah, he's a New York Times bestseller. So that's how diverse this guy is. He literally went from being um, a deathmatch, hardcore wrestler and he redefined himself as this character in the Attitude Era and then became uh, the Kanish. Wrote loads of different books, um, Hard Knocks and Cheap Pops I believe was the... I believe it was the first one, I might be wrong. Um, and literally he's probably one of the most friendly well-versed individuals in the wrestling industry and he's, he's also been the butt of a few jokes in the WWE as well you know, not, he's been engrossed in storylines um, 
that you wouldn't normally see a guy like him like placed in. But he's also one of these old time wrestlers that can actually get someone else over. Even though he's Oh, going up to Maggie. I'll continue that thought process in a second. Yeah, he's literally put everybody over. Um, the what that he could do, you know, guys like Edge, he gave him uh, an amazing hardcore match at WrestleMania. Randy Orton as well. Him and The Rock um, were defeated by Randy Orton, and I believe it was Batista at WrestleMania. Um, and he's also put Orton over in a hardcore match, which was brutal. And it's a testament to both guys, including Randy Orton as well, because he took thumbtacks to the back. Not something that you usually see on a pay-per-view, especially when you're looking at someone like Orton as well, who doesn't have much padding when it comes to his rather defined look. Oh, might have beaten me up. But there's one thing about this little hurry-up thing. If you don't move on to the next screen on time it will literally kick you in the butt and you'll lose some of your life so you have to make sure that you always move on while that hurry up sign's going on so yeah Mick Foley he's literally someone who's done so much with so little so to speak and I'm not saying because he's under talented, but I would say so little as in he was sort of pigeonholed as a uh, hardcore wrestler. Um, and I remember someone saying that, oh, he's a professional wrestler, he can't write, you know, he doesn't know how to write a novel. And he was the first person to actually release a book, um, a book that sold rather well and uh, was a New York Times bestseller. Then you had other wrestlers release um, their variations of novels as well. Like The Rock, which I, I wasn't very much a, a fan of, of The Rock's book. Stone Cold Steve Austin, which was a, it was a great, great book that he released, um, co-written by Jim Ross. And um, Shawn Michaels as well, which was a great little book. But again, a lot of these stories were done in kayfabe. Whereas uh, Mick Foley wrote his own book, so he went into detail about his life, opened up himself a bit, and talked about sort of the hardships and and also he poked fun a little bit on his um, abilities in terms of uh, wrestling, and even talked about the moment uh, which Mikey highlights in in the Nerd Genius article about. Um, himself versus The Rock in the I Quit match. I believe it was at the Royal Rumble. And um, he talks about the fact that The Rock continuously beats him over the head with a chair in front of his own family. And literally, he went to town on Mick. And that could have literally killed him. Because he just swung and swung and swung. They sort of hashed it out afterwards, which um, was a good thing, I believe. But it was something that shouldn't have happened in the first place. And it's one of the many reasons why I'm not a big fan of uh, The Rock. But saying that, you know, I'm not going to sit there and knock the guy's abilities. Because, you know, The Rock has, is the best talker in the industry today. It's a shame that he doesn't, you know, do seminars and classes with the other like new talent in FCW and help them to find their own niche to get over. But it does highlight what I've been saying from time and, and time again about how you need to allow wrestlers to get themselves over rather than, um, you know, write for them because they're not actors. The saying that some have broken through, like uh, Dwayne Johnson, who's probably been the most successful, 
Hulk Hogan. Ooh, he's had some terrible movies. And even Foley himself. Um, but you have to have that rather charismatic ability, which I, I believe all three of these guys have had. Even though Hogan's probably been the most successful of the three in the wrestling industry. Even though Mick Foley and The Rock have made a load of money, especially in the Attitude Era. But they're the sort of the stepping stone, they're a dying breed, so to speak. Right, back to the game. Uh, this is a bowling ball, and as you can tell, it has, I believe, four or five different changes where one's the ball itself, another's when it grows hands, which is what you're seeing at the moment, and starts walking in both hands. The next one's it's uh, walking along using the hands to sort of hit you and then it has um yeah it's four four different changes i think no 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 i disagree it has actually three three different changes i was wrong <laughs> right so we're getting out the dream stage and moving on to the uh next stage which is i believe Oh yeah, we have a, a little bonus game here now. You have to wake up your character by slapping him in the face. Ready? Go. Slap that bitch. Most of you just want to play Marja so you can slap her silly. And I won, finally. Ooh, I think I've got a uh, one up. And I'm at Channel 6 News. Again guys, leave a comment. What's your uh, favourite Mick Foley moment? You can even post a video of it here. Because he is one of the greatest wrestlers um, for the, not just the hardcore division really. But he's a great talker as well. Even though he was only WWE Champion, I believe on, uh, just trying to think, I think it was three separate occasions. So he won it once as Mankind, or twice actually. Uh, the first time he won on an episode of Monday Night Raw, where uh, Tony Schiavone on uh, WCW decided to spoil it and mock Mick Foley at the same time, calling him, uh, I believe he was calling him something like a loser on WCW Nitro. The problem was, once they gave away those spoilers, everyone uh, tuned in to Raw to see Foley win the championship. That's how loved the guy was. Still is, really. And if you um, haven't seen Foley's comedy tour, check it out, it's on uh, YouTube. He's uh, actually put in a few clips of some of the shows that he's done. He's done, and he is hilarious. Seen you going through channel six. Ooh, look at the space background. Now reiterate the competition again, guys. It's a chance to win 2,100 Xbox Live points, or as you guys call them, Microsoft points. So you can spend it on anything from downloadable content to um, our Xbox Arcade games. Or if you want to hand it out to family members, if you have a uh, Xbox Live family account, and it's um, it'll be delivered on uh, April the first, courtesy of Gamesbit. They're not giving it for free, by the way. I'm actually purchasing this for those who actually enter the competition. Um, the winner, the competition will be posted both on uh, my BBAM channel and also um, the Nerd Genius. And there will only be one winner. So whoever wins it will get a nice little uh, email from myself. And uh, I'll just ask for your email address and I'll send it to you directly via email. Because that's how Gamesbit does it. You don't have to actually get a scratch card. Sent via the post, you just get an email. So just do me a favor and don't sell it on eBay which a lot of you tend to do.
just beating the killer robots and now I've got to beat up the same generic characters. It does get mundane when you're just pushing a button hitting these guys. But there is a sense of accomplishment there, or some sense of it. Ah, ninjas. Here we go, we've got some variation this time. That's part of the, of the uh, game's charm, really. They do have some characters who aren't a part of the, uh, the first few levels. Because you usually get the guys in the suits and the ties and the shirts. Um, beating on you, but this is kind of different because you have these little uh, ninjas. And I think in a minute you're going to get the pallet swap ones, the uh, green ones coming out. Yep, here they are. Hmm, I wonder what that sign says there. Is that Chinese or Japanese? Let me know. Oh yeah, and remember, to enter this competition, you just need to like either the Nerd Genius or my channel BBAYM, B -B -A -Y -M, and the other channels the Nerd Genius, N-E-R-D-G-E-N-I-O-U-S. The reason why I'm using both channels at this point in time is because I'm going to be slowly moving um, all my playthroughs and my uh, various Nerd Genius product, uh, projects, should I say not products, projects, to my um, The Nerd Genius YouTube channel. It's so I can just get the channel uh, as a director's channel, fire from a cinema or the game station or some one of those channels basically. And um, you know I'm going to be doing various sort of game related projects on the Nerd Genius and uh, once everything's sort of integrated and moved over there then the BBAM channel is going to be my uh, it's just mostly going to be used for show reels and bits and pieces so as the Nerd Genius will be used for all Nerd Genius related stuff such as like uh, site content and bits and pieces but I'd rather not you know do them on both channels but I'm going to be doing it for now for the first three seasons before moving everything over to Nerd Genius Oh, here's the boss. Is he a geisha or is he a sun? Is he a kabuki? Because if he was a kabuki, he'd wear a mask on me. Oh, he actually is. I think he is a kabuki. Get him with my awesome kung fu homer moves. It's actually quite funny for someone so fat. Homer still manages to move rather elegantly in this game. You just gotta watch out for this guy's um stick. <laughs> Don't even know what to call it. I think it's a pike or something. Or staff if you wanna you wanna call it a staff. As he keeps hitting you, so the best bet is just to keep wailing on him. And I believe this is the second to last level, so video three will be the final level where we face Raymond Smithers. I believe we're on nine continues now. I may be wrong. In order to um, win the 2100 Microsoft points, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment. Neither the Nerd Genius, T H E N E R D G E N I O U S, or B B A Y M, which is my personal channel. You like, subscribe, leave a comment. And it has to be a Simpsons related comment, so you have to do something rather funny but more Simpsons y, if that makes sense. Anyway, guys, that's the end of episode two, and I'll see you in episode three.
Oh, while I'm walking through. Ooh, shiny. 